Hello friends, welcome back. My name is PK. In this video, you will learn how to create this beautiful procurement dashboard in Microsoft Power BI. As you are seeing my screen, I have created this beautiful dashboard. This is the overview page and I have opened it from the Power BI services. On the top, we have given the different slicers to see the data. If you select any value in the slicer, the whole page will be filtered. Then we are showing the few cards like total orders, total quantity orders, then pending payments, percentage paid and the total cost. And here we have given the page navigation also. We have five different pages. The first one is the overview, then the supplier performance, order status, payment analysis and the category analysis. So in this overview, we are showing the total cost by month. So you can see the monthly trend of the total cost. This is the total cost by the location and here we are showing the total cost by the different categories. We have three categories here and then we are showing the total cost by the supplier name. Let me go to the second page which is the supplier performance. Just click on this. Now as you click it will take you to the second page. Now here we are showing the on time delivery rate. The top slicers are the same and we can see it is 68.45. And we can see by the supplier also, let's say for this supplier, this is 62.50. For this one, this is 78.48. Okay, so you can see that. Then here we have the total cost by the supplier. And here we have the lead time. And this is the average of the lead time in days by the supplier. Okay, and this is the some information by the supplier, like what is the total cost, average spend, total orders and percentage paid and then we are showing the on time delivery rate and these are the pending payments. Now let's go to the order status page. In the order status we are showing the total order by the different status like how many delays delivered pending and cancelled and then here we are showing the total orders by the different categories. This is the total orders from the different locations and here we have the some PO related information, the PO number, supplier name, item, then we have some other information also. Now let's go to the payment analysis. In the payment analysis, we are showing count of the PO number by the payment status and this is the overdue amount by the supplier name and here we can see this is the payment term and we can see some information by the supplier what was the total cost and how much is paid and paid and total okay now in the category analysis we are showing the category related information this is the total cost by the month and the category so month on month you can see how the cost is getting changed in the different categories this is the total cost by the category you can see and then here we are showing the category table also wherein we are showing the category name, total cost, total order and average spend, pending payments, percentage paid and the on time delivery date. Okay. Now let me show you the data also for this dashboard. So we have this data in the Excel wherein we have the PO number, supplier name, item name, category, order date, delivery date, quantity, unit price, total cost, location, procurement officer, then status, payment terms, and here we have the payment status also. All right. Now let me show you the dashboard which we have created and I will explain you also. So this is the dashboard which we have created and here in the data we have this data table. So let me go to the data view. So this is the data which we have loaded in this data table. This is the same data which I have explained in the Excel. We have added two calculated column. One is the lead time in days. You can see the formula lead time is nothing but just the delivery date minus order date. So we have here delivery date. You can see this one minus order date. And we have mentioned if delivery date is blank, then it will show the blank. So that means if order status is pending and it is not delivered, it will not show the delivery date. So in that case, it will not show the lead time also. All right. The another one we have taken that is the okay for the overdue amount. We are just checking if the payment status is overdue, then we are just taking the total cost. So here we have the total cost. If this status is overdue, then we are taking this one. Otherwise, we are taking zero. Okay. So these two column we have added 
and now we have added one calendar table also and we have used this calendar table using the DAX we are just minimum and the maximum order date and then we have created this table using the calendar function okay and once this table is ready we just have created the relationship between our main data table and the calendar table so here you can see we have created this relationship this one which is the date okay you can see that now let me come to this one and uh, let me show you the measures also which we have created so we have created a new major calculation table wherein we have created these measures so let me show you the uh, measures from bottom this is total quantity ordered you can see this is simply sum of total quantity total orders we are taking the distinct count means the unique count of po numbers then total cost is also this simple sum of total cost okay now in the pending payments we are using the calculate function and we are taking the sum of total cost wherein payment is unpaid but we are putting one more filter that the status should not be cancelled because if order is cancelled then definitely it will be unpaid okay so we are excluding those orders also now on time delivery rate to calculate the on time delivery rate we are checking if order is delivered within 30 days of the order date then we are considering on time otherwise we are considering it as out of the time so we are just checking from the total data how many delivered on time you can see we are using this filter and less than or equal to order date plus 30 days okay and make sure the delivery date should not be blank also now average is spent we are simply taking the average of the total cost and the percentage paid we are simply taking the total order paid divided by total order wherein it should not be cancelled okay all right so these are the measures which we have created now let me show you how we have created this dashboard so this is the you can see one shape we have taken and this is separate shape and this shape we have loaded from the insert and the shape so let's go to the insert and you can choose the shape from here and we have taken this shape okay rounded tab top right okay this one and then you can just create this and here we have taken the page navigation so you can insert the page navigation from the button navigator and page navigator and then you can use the formatting as you want so same we have done here okay and in the background canvas uh, we have put some color so you can go to the page formatting wherein you can go to the canvas background and here you can select some color so we have taken some light color from here and just keep the transparency as zero okay so we have the background color and for this shape we have put some dark color then we have created the simple slicer for the month name and the supply name and the location category and the status so you can insert the slicer from here this is the slicer and you can insert it and after inserting it you, from the slicer setting you can create the drop down okay so that drop down is created now these are the card the new card we have used so just click here and uh, you can see we have used this card new okay you can add the card and uh, then we have added the total orders from the major table this one so we have added total order added the total quantity ordered then this is the payment pending and this is the paid percentage and this is the total cost okay so you can see we have used all matrix here and these are the simple line chart wherein we are using the total cost and the month name and here on this bubble chart this bubble chart is this one and here on this map this is the map we have used in the location we are taking the location column and here on the bubble size we are taking the total cost in the total cost by category this is the pie chart we have used from here this pie chart wherein we are taking the category and the sum of total cost and here we are taking the supply name and the sum of total cost so this is what we have created in this page now let me move to the second page which is supply performance to create the second page we just have made it duplicate so just right click and make this page as duplicate 
then everything will appear here also just rename the page and then we have put the same slicer everything we just have changed few chart like for this one we are taking this gate chart which is available here this one and then here we are taking this bar chart this is this column cluster column chart this one and this is the cluster bar chart and this is the bar chart you can see stack or cluster you can take you can take this one also okay and then here we are using this table matrix so we are using the different measures which we have created and then we are taking few information from the data table also same here we are taking some information the lead time we are taking from here to show the average and uh, here also we are taking this on time delivery rate all right in the order status also we have used the same design everything is the same now we just have used here this is total order by status so we have taken this donor chart and you can see we are taking the total orders and the status we are taking from here this one so you can see this is the status the total orders by category we are taking category and the total orders total orders we have created this measure which is the distinct count of the PO numbers okay now here we have the total orders by location and total orders and here we have the location so we have created this map we have put the total orders on the bubble size and we have put the tooltip also for total orders and the paid if you hover here so you will get the paid percentage also we are already showing the total orders in the bubble so we don't need it you can remove this one also so you can see it is working now here in this table we are taking a lot of information so we are taking this information from the data like category item location order date po number procurement officer and some other information and few information we are taking from here also all right let's go to the next page and similar to the previous one we have created this payment analysis also the same page and we are showing the information related to the po also here we are taking the count of the po numbers and this is the payment status and here we are showing the overdue amount by the supply name so supply name and the sum of the overdue amount we have this overdue column this one this is the matrix we have taken here this matrix so we are taking the payment terms and the supply name here and payment status we have moved to the columns you can see then we are taking the total cost and the total order here in the category analysis we are showing the total cost by month and the category you can see we have taken here this 100% stack column chart and we are showing here month name and the sum of total cost okay and the category is in legend now what we have done here we have just enabled this ribbons okay earlier it was looking like this and if you just enable the ribbon it will look like this and here this is the category wise total orders so just remove it by region this is this is total order by category and here we are showing the category wise total cost total order the all other information by category okay so this was the category analysis and once we have created this whole information we just have published it to the power bi services so you can just save it and you can click on the publish and just select so it will publish to the power bi services because i have already published it so it will ask me that it will replace the data set and the report to say yes then it will just replace so you can see so just click on the replace then it will replace it yes so this is published if you click on this link it will open the dashboard here so let me close the previous one all right so this is working you can see you can put on the full screen also from here so this is the full screen mode all right if you click on the category analysis it will take you to the category analysis this is the total order by the category we just have changed it all right friends so that is how you can create this procurement dashboard in microsoft power bi this is a ready to use dashboard and you can download it from our website friends i hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please hit the like button and please subscribe my channel to get the regular update of my videos thank you so much for the watching